with this Axios interview, you compared the president to Chernobyl, something of a nuclear meltdown, and then you went on to say a couple more weeks like this and country over party is going to require the Republicans to replace the top of the ticket in 2020. A couple more weeks like this, you say. A couple more weeks like what? Well, the last time I was in this chair with you, John, we were talking about the racially charged rhetoric that led to a whole Twitter nonsense from the president. And obviously, he then left to go to the two shooting areas. And so now he comes back from the two shooting areas. That was like a total catastrophe because the only thing he was doing in those areas was talking about himself and praising himself and, and crowd sizes. And so. It just one day after the next, it gets worse and worse and worse. And in the meantime, as you know, in a chair like this or inside your studio or elsewhere, you know, I got fired two years ago and have tried to stay very loyal to him and very loyal to the agenda because I think the policies are very, very good for the American people. But the rhetoric is so charged and so divisive that we have to all just take a step back now and say, what, what are we doing actually? So. Uh, one thing that I find reprehensible, and the president continues to do this, and I think what will en end up happening is sound and reasonably minded men and women in the Republican Party will say, wait a minute, we can't do this. He is giving people a license to hate, uh, to provide a source of anger, to go after each other, uh, and he does it on his Twitter account. So let's just stop for a second and think about this. Uh, we, we ignore it, but he goes after people personally. Going after me personally, no problem. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Donnie Deutsch can take it. But he goes after ind individuals uh, as the president of the United States on his Twitter account, okay, which incites hate, which incites death threats. I mean, at some point, I think the people in my party will have to look at all this stuff and, and stop being anesthetized to it and say, hey, what are we doing? The policies are great, many of them. The trade war thing is likely going to end up in, a, in an unexpected outcome. We can talk about that if you want. But lastly, how are we all tolerating this? So, so to me, I'm just saying, it, it, you know, last week, arguably one of the worst weeks in his presidency, and again, I'm not talking about things that happened to him politically from a legislation point of view or things like that, but just from the way he's acting as a human being. Mm -hmm. So to me, a couple more weeks like this, I really do believe there will be a groundswell in the party where people say, hey, the policies are great, but you're setting us up uh, the way Jimmy Carter set up the Democratic Party where they went into the wilderness for 40 years. So, Our so those are my opinions. I'm very proud to state them. And, uh, you know, listen, I mean, if you saw the Chernobyl series, it did not end well. So uh, we're in the first two episodes now. Let's see how this thing uh, uh, unfolds. Are you calling for a change at the top of the Republican ticket? Uh, well, I'm calling for it to be considered, yes. I think you have to uh, consider a change at the top of the ticket when someone is acting like this, when someone is that... Uh, uh, lacks intellectual curiosity to take ideas from friends. Just to give you an example, last week on this show, you asked me specifically, do I still support the president? I said that I did. I go on the Bill Maher show, I'm asked, do I still support the president? Yes, I do. However, the racially charged comments, the divisive tweeting, the nonsense coming from the president is not helping the country. And so if you're in a place in your mind where loyal people to you, and again, I was fired two years ago, he pointed that on Twitter, big deal, blah, blah. I do appreciate the president getting the 11 days right though, by the way, so thank you, Mr. President. Uh, but you know, he's, he's out there doing things and you're trying to give him advice, but he can't listen to anybody. And if you say something that's one or two sentences off the mark of his support, and I would tell his loyalists, Loyalty is not blind obedience unless you're supporting a demagogue, okay? Anthony, and so you don't want to ever be like that in your life. Anthony, last week when I asked you if you still supported and the answer was yes. This morning when I asked you if you're calling yes. for a change at the top of the ticket, you said it should be considered. So are you no longer as of this morning it should, should supporting... Be I'm, I'm in a neutral, I'm now in a, I'm a, I'm a Republican, so I'm not switching parties to... Mm -hmm 
support a Democrat. I, be, I believe in the values and the policies of the Republican Party, but I'm, I'm now neutral on the president. You're now neutral on the president. let's see how he continues to act. And if he, if, now, oh, absolutely. You have, to, you have to get into a neutral position. And All right, very, so you are no longer an active... You are people. no longer... Anthony, I just, I just don't want to pass this by so people... You are no longer an active supporter of President Trump and his re-election bid. Yeah, I think that's... I th I think that's pretty obvious from over the weekend. I mean, the guy's uh, actually dissembling a little bit, and he's sounding more and more nonsensical. And, you know, we're sort of anesthetized to it, and people inside are watching, oh, yeah, that's just President Trump. Just let him act like that. But, you know, you're, you're fracturing the institutions and all of the things that the country stands for. So that's not worth the economic policies. You know, that's not worth the... Uh, uh, GDP growth, which, by the way, is slowing down, and the stock market's exactly where it was a year ago. And I do think you have a, a, a bigger problem with the trade war than people think. The Fed is not cutting rates if the economy is doing super well. So, Anthony, so, Anthony? so you've got a combination of things okay. now. Yes, go ahead, John. I was going to say, so the one intervening event over the weekend was you had a Twitter exchange with the president where he criticized you directly. All the other stuff is stuff we've seen from President Trump for years at this point, from when he was before president. So, well, so, so what changed exactly you, over you, the last two you, days? Okay, so you, so, so you and Allison have often asked me that, and people mm -hmm. say, well, okay, where's the red line where you, 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 you break from your support from somebody? Because remember, loyalty is symmetrical. Right. It's not asymmetric. And so, so what I said to you last week was, geez, this is really polarizing. This is very, very divisive. As a supporter of his, I would caution that we not go in this direction. You brought up stochastic terrorism mm -hmm. in our last interview, and I suggested, okay, I can understand how this charged rhetoric coming from the bully pulpit of the presidency could lead to some unintended tragic consequences. And so what all I said was, I wish the president would stop doing that. One scintilla of criticism, you get this sort of backlash. And so for, for me, uh, it's a combination of factors. He's taking one step too far with the racial charging of his rhetoric and his Twitter feed. And you can say, okay, well, the only reason why you're breaking from him now is that he went after you specifically on Twitter uh, and, and, and I'll accept that. I think that, to me, was a big turning point because I'm looking at that saying, wait a minute, I'm out here supporting him. The guy fired me two years ago. I have been super loyal to this guy, super loyal to the president's agenda, but there's something wrong with the guy as a leader if he can't take constructive criticism mm -hmm. or advice from people that have been super loyal to him. Anthony. So the, it, it tells you that there's probably not a lot of listening going on inside the White House, at which point... You know, we have to shine a light on that, and, and it requires people to be truthful to themselves and truthful to the country one of the things, over a specific person. One of the things you wrote over the weekend was eventually he turns on everyone, and soon it will be you, and then the entire country. What do you mean he could turn on the entire country? Uh, well, he has a nihilistic way to his personality. So uh, the minute you say something he doesn't like, he, he, he figures that he can in intimidate you like a bully. You know, I mean, John, where in American history or in our movies or in our culture does the bully win? You know, so to me, this uh, gruff, intimidating bullying nonsense, strong people have to get together mm -hmm and call it out for what it is. And so, so that's where I stand on this. And I try to stay loyal to him. Uh, but you, you can't be loyal to somebody that, again, is asymmetric in his loyalty. And so, you know, the people know that. I mean, the overwhelming flood of texts, phone conversations, and support last night from people that are actually inside the White House, uh, up on Capitol Hill, uh, former elected officials, current uh, people in positions of power, current elected officials, is truly staggering. And so, uh, Who? I think if you, we can you give us any can you give group, us any names? People, can you give us any names or it's characterize not, the it's types not, of people who call in support of John, you? John, John, it's not fair. But at some point, these people will have the courage to speak up on their own. Okay, you know, somebody said to me last night, why? And there are detractors too. I want to be very balanced here. Why did I leak something to Axios? I'm like. 
I didn't leak anything. That, that was on the record. Name on it. So totally Anthony, the, the, the reason you, I was asking who yeah, is to name names totally is, on the record, I'm so. trying to get a sense of. Obviously, you're not an elected think, official, but who do you think you who do you think you represent? Who do you think you represent? Who are the Anthony Scaramucci's? of the world here. What type of Republican a, or Trump supporter think, do you think now is vulnerable? I think there's a very large group of people that are thinking about this from an intellectual point of view that are marrying policy to country, the origin of the country, what the country stands for, why we have the first name United, and they're stepping back and saying, okay, wait a minute, this is way too divisive. Okay, he is the commander in chief and he's supposed to represent everybody. And so when he's going in a direction of being this divisive and using this type of rhetoric, again, using your words, stochastic terrorism and things like that, you gotta stop and say, wait a minute, if you can't take any advice from your friends and you're siloed in, you just, you know, random uh, tweet storming people. Uh, to me, it doesn't make any sense.